what is going on everyone it is Kieran the Barber back finally with a haircut tutorial um I had to wait until Riley's hair grew nice and long so we could have a play do some test filming uh, make sure the camera's right where we're positioning everything so today we're doing a crop with a um, a pattern he wanted a pattern it's the Easter holidays so we're doing just a couple of like squiggly lines um, so to start we use the number three um, to remove bulk what you'll see is I start on the left side of the hair and I finish off the left side of the hair and then I move on to the back of the hair and from the back of the hair I move on to the right side of the hair and then I'll go round and I'll blend the top in and then I'll chip into the top etc etc and so on and so forth just to um, just that's how I process a haircut that's how I've been doing it for the last couple of years now is where I kind of find myself doing one haircut as in one side I'll make one side look perfect go to the back make the back look perfect go to the right side make the right look perfect it's just instead of going all the way around all the way around all the way around all the way around I just like to work on one section at a time um, that's how I've been working the last few years and that's how this is how I've been doing it so we get the one um, one guard open so it's rightfully a one and a half and what I'm doing is I'm just rubbing against the hair just flicking that up ever so slightly again this is just a very very rough sketch of kind of what I want to do where I want to be finishing I want to get the one and a half in so I can then put the pattern in I think if you go any shorter on a pattern than a one and a half then it doesn't really pop it doesn't stand out um, so what you have to do is you have to just uh, make sure it's either a one and a half or a two and it's absolutely perfect it should um should pop so just removing that and then we shall stick in the pattern what i do is um for me again as i just said this was kind of some test footage i haven't cut hair since december the 18th and it's now april the 10th <laughs> so <laughs> um we've cleaned up the shop and we've kind of cleaned all of our clippers got them out so again i wasn't really sure which ones were my sharp clippers my hard hitters um and i honestly thought it was going to be my babyliss fx that were going to be my my hard hitters and i started cutting around this pattern with them and i realized that they just weren't as sharp as I remembered maybe it's because where I've gapped them I've not gapped them too close or I'm not really sure I'm gonna have to take a proper look at them they are putting in the line but they're not putting in the line as smooth as I want to I'm constantly having to re go over that line um, and you can see that I'm using just on certain parts just a corner of the blade just to flick round and across and then I'll come down flat when I'm doing the straight lines and then what I'll do is I'll just go across but um, again with, with these babblists I honestly thought they were going to be my hard hitters because they, they were when I left just before Christmas <laughs> and now I've come back um, I started putting in this line and I realised that they weren't as sharp as kind of I, I remembered um, so I fiddle about I didn't actually test all my trimmers out I think I've got about 7 or 8 pairs of trimmers and, um, and I was just like do you know what Let's try a couple to see which which is hard hitters. So then I pick up my silver slim lines, and they just they were pulling. They weren't doing the trick either. So I went back to my old faithfuls, which is my black slimline pro allies, and they seem to hit quite hard with. They got a ceramic blade on, and they seem to just get into that cut like the minimal hairs off before. I start going around and cut throat in the hair um, so yeah they, they did really really well and then uh, straight after I started before I kind of cut through this around I started blending in, like the sideburns so going around the edges getting the shape up and then I started taking it off because with a pattern you don't want to take this too high and um, so what I did was I kind of did just a taper a very very small taper just around the ear just around the edges because if I took that up any higher it would it would take detail away from the pattern you want that to stand out 
so for me i kind of did at the very very bottom of the pattern it was around like a one or a half but you've got to remember what you do on this side with the pattern you have to replicate on the other side so i can't go doing a low taper here and then on the other side doing a a high taper or a high fade and just doing like a normal haircut on the other side because it doesn't look right it doesn't sit right you've got one side which will be a high fade and then you've got the other side which will be a, a low fade and so you, you don't want that at all so my um my opinion is is that you just stick to doing the low fade all the way around around the back around the sides and stuff how's um how's lockdown been for any everyone as well i mean we haven't cut hair since december the 18th so let me know where you're from if you're allowed to cut hair yet um and, or how long you've been cutting hair for i know texas is fully fully open now i know that certain parts of um, america are open and some are closed still in the uk we're not allowed to open currently until april the 12th so i'm just waiting for that green light which is currently april the, april the 8th so I've got four, four, four days until I go back to work, which has been the longest few months of my life. Or is it December, January, February, March? For nearly five, five months of not cutting hair, which has been absolutely crazy, absolutely crazy. I've never cut. I've never not had a holiday this long in my whole life. So yeah, how's lockdown affected everyone? I've got to. Um, I waited until last minute to get hold of Riley's hair because I was like, I need practice. I think everybody needs practice and people who say they don't they 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 definitely do so <laughs> i thought there's no better person to practice on than my son so this might not be the best haircut but this is still my method of cutting hair i think it turned out pretty well i'm not gonna lie to you um he was really happy with it and that that was the main thing but not cutting hair in five months it's it's absolutely horrible because you think you're gonna lose your spark or you're gonna lose what you had so it was nice to just get in the chair a few days before and, and cut some hair at least um i've i've cut my own hair which <laughs> it is it's completely different from cutting someone else's hair so i have picked up clippers but just to trim my my mustache and my my kind of beard as such and then um just get myself a little little tidy up but yeah, so I think what we're doing is we're going in on the day before we're going to tidy up. We're all going to give each, all of our staff, we're going to give each other haircuts and stuff like that, which is, that's going to be nice because it gives us then, if we can all do a couple of haircuts each and stuff like that before we open, we've all had a little bit of practice. So now with the blade, I'm just going to blade up the, um, the pattern, which I have done, and then remove the hair and it makes it really pop, makes it really stand out. Now here's a little trick that um, I learned recently. I must say recently, I've, I've learned this trick. Um, is if you have a, a child or a kid or even an adult which is quite skinny where they have that bump in the back, right at the bottom of the neck where their hair kind of bumps into the back. Now my trick is to keep their back and posture nice and straight and make them look to the right so not their whole body keep their keep their back nice and straight arched up and make them spin their head just to the right or to the left and what that does is that really stretches out that piece of skin and then you can you can cut it whichever way you like you can blend that in i'm going to um, i'm going to show you in a second how that works um it is such a simple technique and i never ever knew about it and then someone said well, why don't you do this and i was like why why don't i do that um so as you can see the bit in the middle is really dark in the minute but i don't plan on keeping it like that obviously i'm gonna go with a with a shaver so as you can see this bit here turn the head all the way around and that completely then stretches that bit out so now it's completely flat i can take my trimmer go up and there we have it as you can see i'm slightly following the hair so i'm coming up on one side now to start that skin fade coming up and around the, to the towards the other side i haven't i've i've done podcasts but i haven't actually talked to myself i say this is talking to myself this is talking to you guys 
I haven't done this in a long time as well, so I'm still a bit like, oh my god, I'm gonna, I'm talking on the mic again to myself. It's a bit. So let me know how I'm getting on. <laughs> I apologise if I'm sounding a bit starry or I'm talking too much and I'm annoying you. I'm, I apologise. I'm just first video, first video nerves. I haven't cut, I haven't cut hair in a long time and I haven't edited a video in a long time. Um, so yeah, it's just me getting, um, getting these haircuts out now. I hit 103,000 on YouTube the other day and I was gassed. Um, so if you are new to the channel, do not forget to hit that subscribe button, the like button, give me a comment, anything like that helps this channel massively beyond belief. So yeah, if you could just click cheekily click that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed, I really, really would appreciate that. Um, and I try to respond to everyone's comments in the um, comment section as well. So I can't wait to get back to work as well because we can start Barbering 101 again. I've got the list, the list of Barbering 101 stuff that I need to do. And so we're going to be doing that within the next um, few months. Finish that off. I've, I think I got to episode six and there's 15 episodes. I have all the episodes in my notes. I just need to find people to do Barbering 101 on and also let it be a little bit quieter in the salon so I can actually talk live to you guys. Um, it's, a, it's harder to narrate a video doing Barbary 101 than it is just being live and just talking naturally while you're explaining the haircut live. It's, it's a lot easier. So yeah, now we're just we're just going through the motions. We're going through the one and a half to a one to a half. Um, and what I got was I got the uh, the Ergo do a magnetic guard what fits the walls. So they're really good. But nothing replicates this, the, the half guard that we'll do. So I suggest if, regardless of what you're using, get that half guard because that half guard is an absolute blessing. That helps me blend in. And then we just take off no guard, just open clipper. And we just blend in like that. It's very, very simple. So as you see, putting in my skin line, the very, very bottom, like I said to you guys, we're just, as we're doing a a very low taper or a low fade um, depending on what country you're from different people call it different things I just call it a low I call it a low taper but I know certain people call it a low fade let me know in the comments what you would call this haircut and then we go from a one and a half to a one to a half guard open to a half guard closed and then we go from a zero all the way down just just um, fading out but on my zero what I like to do is I like to just use the corner points of the clipper so I can just flick that out scratch that out and that fade then slowly slowly pops and it starts to look really really nice really fresh So as you can see what we're doing here is just flicking that fade scratching that out there's there's nothing more to it really other than a fade can last as long as you want it to last I'm just stretching the skin out half to go down to my quarter then go down to my zero just flicking up flicking out using them corners scratching away very very slowly just making sure it's absolutely perfect and then onto a little bit of scissor work. I do like a little bit of scissor work. So my scissors are from Philip George. They're really, really good scissors. I've only just really started using them because I got them during lockdown. But I use them on this haircut and they cut like bar, really, really smooth. Never had rose gold scissors before, so <laughs> they're, um, they're really nice. <laughs> any, any, um, anything that I've used will be in the um, description down below for you to get a hold of so with scissor work you're coming up at a 90 degree angle I can, here you can see I'm going into the hair then pulling back out I'm not I'm not um, going into the hair and cutting going in pulling back out cutting up at a 90 degree angle 
combing that right back down just to make sure there's no lumps and bumps you'll see heavy parts of the hair where um you need to cut i'm leaving you can see from the crown upwards i'm kind of leaving that because that is so yeah just a little bit of scissor work also just let you know i am editing at home so if you can hear i don't know what noises you can hear but if you can hear kids running downstairs there's my kids just being absolutely bananas while I am upstairs currently editing this video. <laughs> oh dear. So even with the sides, you're coming up at that 90 degree angle. Um, and even with the fade right at the very bottom, you can still grab hair. And then what I'll do is I'll come in with the texturizing shears and I'll just start just soften in that fade because what you don't want to do is some people will not be very good at scissor work so for them this technique here where you just come up thin that out slightly what that does is that will slowly slowly soften that but do not go over it too much because then you'll start to see gaps you'll start to see holes and that is not what anyone wants no one wants to see gaps or holes in haircuts so i'd say go up comb down go up comb down go up comb down and then what we do is you'll slowly see that hang on a minute it's getting a little bit too thin or this is just perfect any more than that and you you will ruin a whole haircut so be very very careful when you're using texturizing scissors that's all i can really say about that is just be very very careful now on to some point cutting, Riley's hair hasn't been cut since I just say probably December so we're just going up, we're taking off about a good couple of inches and I'm just going to point cut into that, take it centimetre by centimetre these sections just making sure they're about right and then just ever so gently point cutting into them. It's quite simple really point cutting, you come off it about a 30 degree angle and you just take off that hair for me straight cutting is very very good um, it all depends on what haircut and what look you're going for there is no technique that, that is right or wrong um, Riley is having a crop so I want it to be nice and textured I want it to look like when you dry it it's all really messy as for my haircut, I have a pompadour, I have it sitting nice and straight, I have it nice and high and back. So if I chipped into it, it would look like it had like holes into it. So when I get my haircut, I like my hair personally to be straight cut. So there is no, I don't point cut every haircut as I don't, I don't cross cut, or cross cut, I don't point cut or, or just straight cut every haircut. And then onto the fringe, his fringe is so long. Um, so I cut it as a guideline. So this is this is where it gets a little bit harder on um, Riley's hair is that he, his fringe tends to spring up one side. So I have to constantly cut, dry, cut, dry, cut, dry, pull down, cut, cut, cut. Because, and it takes me a while to get this fringe right because he's got a cow's lick and he's, his hair when he was younger was very, very curly. So for some reason, his fringe has still stayed curly in certain areas. So some hair flicks to the left, some hair flicks to the right. So you've got to be very, very careful when you're cutting that fringe because you don't want to cut it too short on one side because it'll just bounce up. And then you just cross check over the whole haircut. Just making sure you've not missed any bits or there's any darker shadows and stuff like that. Then on to finishing the hair. So we've got that fringe nice and straight. We're going to use some ball tonic, which actually smells really nice. Um, so some crazy ball hair tonic, which is also like a sea salt spray. It's very, very good. I really liked it. I rated it as the first time I've properly used it. Now, his hair, Riley's hair is really short, but we use the diffuser. And I'll tell you why we use the diffuser. Because it's going to grab that hair from the root and lift it. Even though his hair, I don't want his hair to be curly, I want to give it lots and lots and lots of texture. So a cheap way or a quick way of getting this texture is just by to put the diffuser in the hair, giving it a couple of rolls across the hair, making sure it's nice and dry. But what that's going to do is it's going to really, really lift that hair up from the root. Um, and when you put like a hair powder or a hair gum or a dry matte paste in there, it's 
it's going to be so much easier for you to just lift it up off the root. You're not going to need as much as you think because it's already there. And again, I'm just going to use now my flat, my flat dryer. Well, I don't know what this is called. Just my straight, so I can just blow dry this fringe down nice and straight. So I didn't diffuse the fringe at all. We just kept that nice and straight, and then we're going to just blow dry that down. So what that will do is then, when I put the product in, hopefully that's going to make his fringe go nice and straight and then his hair at the back nice and textured again crazy ball little bit of space dust this grabs onto the hair it holds it, it smells quite nice it, um it's, a, it's an all it's a good powder to be fair it's very very hard these days to find a good powder a nice dry powder um in the uk and ireland we use powder a hell of a lot it's one of the main styling finishing products um where you're from do you guys use powder we 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 at we sell it so much because it's just such a good product and you don't need a hell of a lot and you see i'm just using my fingers to just get in there and mess that up give that make sure that texture bounces and really pops out and then with a the fringe i'm just gonna just grab it with my little fingers and just literally just like rub rub my fingers together just pull it pulling that fringe down making it look nice he's happy with his haircut he'll go to school next week and the best thing is that pattern realistically if i wanted to i could skin fade that out um give him a high skin fade um by by sunday that could grow out so depending if school let him have this pattern or not we're gonna find out <laughs> are you allowed are you allowed your kids to have patterns in school and stuff like that i know um the school that we go to they're okay with it they're not they're not too fast hairspray to finish as always make it look absolutely beautiful guys it has been an absolute blessing and a pleasure doing this video for you guys so make sure you click on that subscribe button um and always thank you for watching my videos i really appreciate you all see you in the next video peace